Hello, everybody. So, I'm in this manga chat art group thing, right? And one of my good friends was looking for advice on coloring and shading. Mainly shading. Um, I'm just going to throw down a simple shape that I can color and shade and stuff. I'm not going to get too tedious on the details. Just simple face shape. But I figured I would give... Um, what advice I do have as far as shading and stuff goes. Mainly I'm going to be focusing on like skin tones and stuff because it's not going to be a long tutorial. But I figured I would make one because you know what? If I could give advice to this friend of mine as well as you know, maybe I could help someone else as well. So I'm going to do basically two layers, and I'm going to have one for the hair, and except for now I'm getting into the uh, tediousness of, well, do I want to draw a character or do I want to uh, just throw down some shapes? And I apologize for that, but you know what? No regrets, so I figured I'd go with my main character from my book. Oops, put it all in the same layer, didn't I? And I'm also probably not going to edit like any of this, so y'all get to see the rawness of how stupid I am. I figured it'd be better that way anyways. So we got simple shape here. Serain has that big poofy hair. So I'm going to throw it down her face. And I'm not going to get too tedious about like how good the art itself looks because again this is mainly a coloring shading tutorial so I got some basic shapes down to know where to put things so we're gonna do a neck And I'm going to end it right there so that it can stay uh, friendly. But the thing I noticed he was struggling with the most was skin. So, of course, I'm going to use a good bit of skin. So that's going to be that. This is the hair. And I'm going to go ahead and lock in this hair like around the areas where it would be Free in case I wanted to use like my magic bucket skill or not skill but uh like the fill in tool and I'm gonna make sure all those gaps are filled in as well uh oh what's that okay so we're going to undo that go back to the hair layer make sure that's filled in This is going to be my details layer, so I'm going to separate that. With my lasso tool. And we will get on to the coloring in a second, I do apologize. So I'm going to... There we go, that's on a different layer. And I'm going to merge the other layer with... So yeah, now I got the hair. I got the skin and I got everything pretty much on its own separate layer. So if I take away the hair. So we're going to go over this and make sure 
And this is not something you have to do, because as long as you have those lines visible, your magic bucket tool or your fill-in tool is going to, you know, it's going to see that. So I've got that separated, I've got this separated, and I've got that separated. So with that considered, hmm. oh well. So I'm going to just kind of start with a base color. Except I got the issue where I I lined her hair to make sure that I had it all in a separate layer. But apparently I lined it on the wrong layer. That way I can get rid of her hair here and on a separate layer or actually I'm going to go above that and I'm going to do a multiply layer. Um, uh, that didn't work. And I'm going to refer to multiple, multiple layers since I'm on a different layer. So I guess I didn't have to do the whole lining thing, but I did anyway. So quite simply get over it. So I've got one block of color. I got a block of color all right here and that block of color is not too interesting. Now I didn't go very light on it and the reason for that, I'm going to go ahead and color in her eyes. So right now it's looking, you know, very, very flat. Very flat indeed. But we're going to we're going to fix that. So I'm going to use my magic bucket tool. I'm going to erase everything except the hair. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this on the same hair as on the same uh same layer as my lines and I'm just going to use the paint bucket tool just to just to get the color down. See, so I have the color down, and I can work from it from there. And you can see that through that, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to that. So we're gonna be using uh, where I have the skin tone. And you can go over that skin tone with another layer, and I have another multiply layer, and you can color reference and do kind of cell shading like this and this is a very reasonable technique depending on how you like your stuff now I've got a very hard brush that I'm using in fact I'm using the uh, the real G pen brush it's my favorite one to do line with because it's got that right amount of uncleanliness now, I can go in with that. Now, one mistake I see a lot of artists do. So, I'm going to do my layer color just to give a brief showing of what they do. Is they go in with grays. Now, if you'll see, it looks very kind of ashy. In fact, I'll even go a little bit darker to show what I'm talking about. So if you use grays to shade with, now if you like the way that looks, but it can make your characters look very washed out, very very bland, very dry. So you do want to go in with a color. Now the color I'm using here is basically the same color on a multiply layer that I used with her skin tone. It's the exact same color. Now, depending on your how you like to draw, I kind of like to go over where the line art is just to show like another dimension and the curves and stuff. But depending on the lighting or how you you know how you like to do things, so I'm gonna take this layer and I'm gonna show like what different different colors do. Um. So I'm going to take this hue bar. Actually, no, I'm not. 
I'm going to take my my uh, square tool and I'm going to lock the transparency and I'm just going to I'm going to keep it on the same bright actually I'm going to go a little, just a little bit darker I'm going to go to the mid-tone and I'm just going to change it ever so slightly just to show how like the different colors like affect it that's with the yellow I'm going to go in with a blue change the brightness and you can see how like how it kind of changes the mood and the colors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blur this layer just, just a slight bit, just to give it more of a, more of a shade, instead of an exact like drop shadow. So I'm going back with the blue. I'm gonna go in with like a hard pink. So you can kind of see how that looks and I like the way the pink looks so I'm actually going to leave that I'm gonna turn off that layer though another thing you can do um, I'm going to select from layer I'm gonna create selection and that selects everything on that layer so I'm gonna go up again and I'm gonna keep it on a normal layer now if you wanna do a quick shadow now let's just say our light source is coming from this um, let's just say our light source is, light source is going to be right here. Okay, that's our light source. Oops. So I'm going to, just to show where our light source is coming from. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show where our shadows are going to be coming from, because... Shadows create light. So I'm going to show where our shadows are coming from with this kind of blue color. So our darkest area is going to be over here. And our light's going to be coming from over here. Kind of in the front, and then the light's going to be going back. So with that considered, uh, gonna reselect my skin layer. Is that it? No. Oops, did that all in the wrong layer. So we're going to uh, go back to that, and we're gonna keep that lighting in mind because I'm an idiot. And I'm going to go in another layer, and I'm going to keep that a normal layer. And I'm going to take a gradient. And I'm just going to overlay just a slight bit of... Slight bit of tone. Let's see what happens if I multiply that. So I'm going to take a little bit more blue and I'm going to overlay there just, just a slight bit. So you've got a slight bit of shadow. You add that with the slight shading that we did in the beginning. And you've got kind of this, this mood, right? So we go again and I'm going to add an add glow layer. And again, I'm going to shade it. And now you have... A little bit of dimension right you got just a little bit of dimension so I'm gonna take this layer and put it to the top so you can see the sharper blacks and now we have a little bit more of a shade now you can keep adding on to that by going in with more more add glow or more lighting and how you choose to light things is completely up to you. I generally like to, kind of like how I did with this, sh with the first shadows. I like to follow where I laid the line art. Again, to add more shape, more dimension.
keeping in mind where like the face shape and stuff goes. Same thing with the hair. Actually, let's go to the hair. Let's 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 work with that hair. So we're gonna do another selection from layer. Although since this is all one layer, I could just do it. And I'm gonna go in with a multiplied layer. And I'm just going to color in some spaces. And I don't like the color I chose, so I'm gonna choose again. Bit of a warmer color. And again, this is not exactly as neat as I would usually do it. But for the tutorial's sake, we have some shut. No. That's too bad even for me. Even for my quick stuff. So we got we got some shadows working in here. Right, and I'm going to kind of do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to blur that. Just because I'm liking the way the blur kind of looks. So we have that. We can go in with our glow layer with the same, same shade. Or if you have a specific lighting you want to do, you can go in with another shade. So we have our lights, we have our shadows, but let's go on top of that layer. And let's add in a blue, add glow. Now we have where that light source is coming from. Let's take it a step further with the multiply layer. Let's go with a purple, I guess. Let's go in with a blue. Now we have that extra, extra depth. So I'm going back to my add glow layer at the top with a watercolor brush and I'm just going to re-add some of that pinkish color to remind the viewers of what her color is against the light. I'm going to add a multiply layer and give her a little bit of, add a, just a little bit of life back into her because her cheeks are not as red as I would like them to be, so just a little bit. And that's pretty much how I do things. Now I will usually go in with a very thin brush on a normal layer and just kind of like over color over draw over detail that's just because that's how I like to do things in my art but you can play with these techniques and these skills and pretty much do anything with it the biggest thing I would like to advise though is Don't shade with gray. Use color instead. Gradients are your friend. And Know your light source. What color is the light source? Where is the light source? How does the light source interact? Is there something over here that would create like a bounce light? Like like a like a bluish light? Is there something creating that color? That's something to keep in mind. And I figured that's really all you really need to know as far as color because like you could keep going in with like more shading, more lights, and that's really up to you, up to your style, what kind of look you're trying to give. And once you start going into that details, I could have like a three hour long tutorial and I don't think really anyone has time for that today. So... 
I'm going to just leave it there. And that was my quick coloring tutorial. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like on the video. Um, subscribers are welcome. I mean, of course they're welcome. Please. Please. But yeah. This is my quick coloring tutorial. And you guys can have a nice day.